Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Last Tycoon by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So, uh, as always, I'm going to start by reading the blurb, I'm going to share some of my thoughts, I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I will share an overall rating at the end. So, here, in Fitzgerald's most limpid style, is the real Hollywood in its heyday. From the least conspicuous actress-to-be, to the towering artist-autocrat star, the full chorus of Filmland, ruthless moguls, faded actors, broken hat writers, stamp out their steps in the daily routine of business, alcoholism and promiscuity. A synopsis prepared from Scott Fitzgerald's notes completes the story he never finished. So, as you can get from that, the story was never finished. It's basically the first six chapters of it, then kind of spark notes style, but not very well written spark notes style. Like, yeah, it's a summary of what was supposed to happen, but it's hard to follow because a lot of it's in shorthand and stuff. There's a lot of talk about Jews in this as well. I mean, I don't think any of it was particularly anti-Semitic, although I'm not Jewish, so I, would, I wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. But, um, yeah, they're just mentioned in passing a lot. I like this little quote here on uh, what writers are like. There's a writer for you, he said. Knows everything and at the same time he knows nothing. What's that? said Wiley, indignant. It was my first inkling that he was a writer. And while I like writers, because if you ask a writer anything you usually get an answer, still it belittled him in my eyes. Writers aren't people exactly, or if they're any good, but there are a whole lot of people trying so hard to be one person. It's like actors who try so pathetically not to look in mirrors, who lean backward trying, only to see their faces in the reflecting chandeliers. One of the uh, my pet hates in fiction, by the way, is fake intensifiers of so. Like, oh, I was so tired. Unless you're so tired that something happened, I don't want to know. I like this little exchange. Uh, is Mr. Smith a competitor of father's? Not exactly. I should say no. But if he was a competitor, I know where my money would be. I'm father. I'm afraid not. It was too early in the morning for family patriotism. And here we get um, another little insight into what it is to be a writer. It takes more than brains. You writers and artists poop out and get all mixed up and somebody has to come in and straighten you out. He shrugged his shoulders. You seem to take things so personally, hating people and worshipping them. Always thinking people are so important, especially yourselves. You just ask to be kicked around. I like people and I like them to like me, but I wear my heart where God put it, on the inside. Interesting little paragraph here, I'm going to read it to you, you can form your own judgement. In the outer office, two members of the conference group had already waited ten minutes, Wiley White and Jane Maloney. The latter was a dried up little blonde of fifty about whom one could hear the fifty assorted opinions of Hollywood, a sentimental dope, the best writer on construction in Hollywood, a veteran, that old hack, the smartest woman on the lot the cleverest plagiarist in the biz, and of course, in addition, she was variously described as a nymphomaniac, a virgin, a pushover, a lesbian, and a faithful wife. Without being an old maid, she was, like most self-made women, rather old maidish. She had ulcers of the stomach, and her salary was over a hundred thousand a year. A complicated treatise could be written on whether she was worth it, or more than that, or nothing at all. Her value lay in such ordinary assets as the bare fact that she was a woman, and adaptable, quick and trustworthy, knew the game, and was without egotism. She had been a great friend of Minna's, and over a period of years, Starr had managed to stifle what amounted to a sharp physical revulsion. And another little interesting section here on the subject of writers. Jane Maloney was quite a friend of mine. I thought of her rather as a child thinks of a family dependent. I knew she was a writer, but I grew up thinking that writer and secretary were the same, except that a writer usually smelled of cocktails and came more often to meals. They were spoken of the same way when they were not around, except for a species called playwrights who came from the East. These were treated with respect if they did not stay long. If they did, they sank with the others into the white collar class. Jane's office was in the old writer's building. There was one on every lot, a row of iron maidens left over from silent days and still resounding with the dull moans of cloistered hacks and bums. There was the story of the new producer who had gone down the line one day and then reported excitedly to the head office. Who are those men? They're supposed to be writers. I thought so. Well, I watched them for ten minutes and there were two of them that didn't write a line. Writers are writing even when they're staring into space, mate. And this description here sounds a bit like me. With Minna's help, he had enforced a few short rests years ago, and lately he had hinted around, trying to find who Star considered his closest friends. Who could take him away and keep him away? It would almost surely be useless. He was due to die very soon now. Within six months, one could say definitely. What was the use of developing the cardiograms? You couldn't persuade a man like Star to stop and lie down and look at the sky for six months. He would much rather die. He said differently, but what it added up to was the definite urge towards total exhaustion that he had run into before. 
Fatigue was a drug as well as a poison, and Star apparently derived some rare, almost physical pleasure from working lightheaded with weariness. Another great line here, do you know how you make me feel, she demanded. Like a day in London during a caterpillar plague when a hot furry thing dropped in my mouth. Another great quote about writers here. Writers are children. Even in normal times they can't keep their minds on their work. And uh, then we get like this literal diagram. This diagram is the last outline made by the author and it's like a table. So yeah, like the last 50 pages of it or whatever, basically you just... You've got half a novel here that cuts out and then you get this pretty indecipherable layout thing. And then you get this pretty indecipherable like summary of what was supposed to happen. I do like this one little note that he had though. The cleverly expressed opposite of any generally accepted idea is worth a fortune to somebody. But yeah, like his notes are like joke about shoot it both ways. So yeah, that's kind of a disappointment really. Um, as I say, it's just like reading half of a novel and then some indecipherable notes. So I couldn't really give it more than like a 3 out of 5 really, like the philosophy and stuff was in it was good, there were some great lines, some great dialogue as you would expect from F. Scott Fitzgerald, but overall it's still not a finished book, you know, and that's nothing against him as a writer, it's just by the nature of this book I don't know how I could give it more than a 3 out of 5. But anyway, there's what I made of The Last Tycoon by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.